Hi everyone, welcome. You go first. Okay. So, hi everyone, I'm Stefan Prodan. I'm a Flux maintainer for a very long time. And I'm uh, here with Alexis, and we are going to you know, discuss about the Flux feature and how everybody here can help us drive Flux forward. All of you. Yes. Who are you? You did yourself. So I'm Alexis. I used to work with Stefan. Sadly, we shut WeaveWorks down at the start of the year, but many people said, what does this mean for Flux? So we hope to answer that today, talk about where have the maintainers gone, what are they doing, and what's, the, what's next for the project, and then hopefully find ways to have more people contributing to the project and helping the maintainers chop wood and carry water, I think is the popular phrase still. Yeah, we have a plan then to, that we want to share with you today. And let's do the Zoom check first. Is the Zoom working? Some people might be joining by Zoom. It's working? Yes. OK, yes. great. Thank you for joining by Zoom. Thank you. OK, so the agenda for today, I will start with giving you an overview of the um, status of the project, where we are today, what's the current team, and talk about maintenance effort and how we can make that sustainable in the future, hopefully very soon. And Alexis will take over from there and talk about Flux ecosystem and all the tools around Flux and how we can you know, make the ecosystem better and bring back into Flux the good things from the ecosystem. Yeah, so we hope to show you a bit about what's been happening there. Maybe some folks who've, who've considered themselves in the ecosystem have come today or joined by Zoom. They may, may wish to talk about what they're doing. Also, there are people like I see, I think I can see Laszlo over there from Gimlet who've done things like a Flux GUI. So if you want to, there. there he is, he's moved. Sorry, I can't see anything up here, by the way. So I can only hear you. Um, if people want to work on a GUI, there's a, thing, there's a thing to do there. So we'll talk about that kind of thing as well. Yeah. Okay, let's um, kick it off with going to tell you a little bit about how Flux team is composed of and how our um, community drives contributions to Flux. So currently we have, since we started Flux version 2, we have a pool of over 600 contributors. From there, we recruited 11 maintainers. And from those 11 maintainers, eight of those are core maintainers. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a uh, explanation what maintainer and core maintainer means. Flux is made out of many controllers, um, Go packages, it's quite a complex system. So a maintainer is a person that contributes to one component of Flux and says, yes, I want to you know, take responsibility for that component and that's a maintainer. A core maintainer is someone that um, has a wide understanding of what Flux as a whole is doing. And the main role of a maintainer is, of a core maintainer is to, you know, help with all the uh, contributions, recruit people from contributors, convince them to become maintainer of a sub-project, and then convince them again to become a core maintainer and, you know, have oversight over the whole project. Um, we have a governance in place for, for the Flux project. We, we did that right before um, graduation, where the core team, everybody, is part of our governance. So everybody that gets on the core team, we have equal rights uh, inside the project, and we make decisions around how we drive the project forward, um, what features can go in, what features can go in and we can sustain them. And we are also responsible for doing all the release management work, which is a lot of work and I'll, I'll go a little bit into that. And also about setting the roadmap. And we have, I, I'm going to talk tomorrow at the maintainers track around uh, what's the Flux roadmap for this year. And yes, you can Join that talk if you want to find more about the, the roadmap. 
The idea here is that the core team is basically responsible for the overarching of Flux, the Flux distribution and everything that, that's uh, built into it. This is how the team looked like uh, last year. We had nine people, uh, six people were from WeWorks, and those six people were full-time working on Flux. And this is what helped us drive Flux from, I don't know, 0 .0 to 2.0 GA in around two years and a half. This is how the team looks today. Um, we are eight people. Two people are full-time, me, Sule, from Control Plane, and Sunny, uh, another maintainer. With help from CNCF, he's also helping us full-time. All the other people here are either independent, they found jobs in other places, and they are still contributing to Flux and helping Flux. Yes. One thing that uh, we've learned from the CNCF Chris Aniscik is that there is some uh, mentorship and funding available in the future for individuals who wish to be contributing or maybe maintaining code. So if you think you might be one of those people, please let Stefan know uh, as soon as you can. Yeah, so uh, CNCF runs a program where uh, a core maintainer of a project says, hey, we need help in this area. Um, you get a little payment for that get paid to, you know, start contributing to Flux. We handhold, we teach you how to do that, how to start your first contributions, and hopefully after that you can, you know, become a maintainer and become uh, more involved in the project. But the, the message I'm trying to send here is that, you know, the, the people on this team, they are dedicated to Flux, they understand Flux, but for them to do their job, they need to, you know, have some hours on their workday assigned to the Flux project. We can't run the Flux project with maintainers working on nights and weekends. So that's, that's something really, really important and that's one of the goals uh, that we have moving forward. One comment I'll make about that actually. If you're listening to this and you're thinking, how do I get more time for working on Flux at my work? Um, please ask for help because, you know, it is important that if your employer believes that you should work on Flux but they think you should somehow magic, magic that out of your spare time, um, that's not a fair arrangement. And it's really, really helpful to be open about what, is in it, what kinds of commitments are involved and just so people understand that, you know, maybe it's some time during the week, during the, the working day and not nights and things like this. Yeah, yeah. And the... Uh the Flux project is also graduated, so we have a great responsibility every time we add the feature, we change something into Flux, we do a release. Um, it takes time to validate all these things. Uh, we, if you are doing during the nights and weekends, you'll probably, you know, not do it uh, great because you are either too tired, you are out of time, you'll get burned out and stuff like that. So. In order to move the project forward in a healthy direction, we need healthy people <laughs> working on the project. Um, we also have a, a dedicated community team. These wonderful people make Flux community work. They are as important as the core team, in my opinion, and they, they are key people into Flux, which help every one of you, uh, help us with events, uh, documentation, and so on. Uh, so yeah, core team, is important, community team is as important, yeah. I would, first of all, I want to strongly agree with what Stefan just said about the community team, but also I should mention, if you're thinking, how can I help Flux, this might be a good place to start. Um, yes. Being in the community, on Slack, in GitHub, understanding what people are asking. Uh, anyone can do this if you wish to, um, and we would very much welcome more participation, I think, in, in the wider group as well. Yeah, usually the, <clears throat> how you start off as a, a contributor to Flux, you are not going to jump straight in the code. Usually you start by, you know, installing Flux, following the docs. So you'll probably notice, oh, these docs are not that great. I can improve them based on my experience, and that's how you can make your first contribution. Docs are the easiest way to, you know, add value to the project while you are becoming a user. And once you become a user, maybe you have some ideas. Hey, I want to change something. I want to fix a bug. And then maybe you'll get into the code part. But code 
Code contributions are not the most important thing in a project that's quite mature. Documentation, user guides, helping others on, on Slack, on, we also have GitHub discussions and so many people are in there asking all these questions like, I have this kind of setup. I, I don't have an example in Flux how I can use Flux for my particular use case, right? So there are definitely other 20 at least, 20, 50 organizations which have that setup, right? It's important to go there and share your story. Hey, this is how I've, I've configured Flux and that's, in my opinion, a meaningful contribution and you are part of the community only by, you know, interacting with others. So it's not about, you know, pure code contributions. I know, someone changed their name. Uh, okay, let's see what maintainer, maintenance effort means for the Flux project and where we are today. Um, I've listed here some, you know, usual tasks that happens. We, we, since we, we did the GA release, we now have a, a three releases per year cadence. We follow Kubernetes upstream, so after Kubernetes release, we run all our end-to-end -end tests against the, the new release. We, we do that uh, for the first beta ones, and then we upgrade all the Flux dependencies, all the packages, everything to the new version, then we test it again. We do all the backporting. We test with all the late, uh, last three supported version of Kubernetes, and this is all part of you know, the, what it means to, to ship a GA project. And, and make sure we don't break anything when we do the release. So the release is kind of a, a big maintenance burden. It's a load, it takes from two to three weeks uh, to do a minor release. And we, we also have, you know, sometimes we ship a issue, a problem, a bug, or is there is a CV, so we need to do patch releases and we need to do it fast. Right, so that takes around three days, and it's always always need people from from the core maintainers team because they have access to create a, a tag, they have access to you know uh, merge a, uh, a pull request and so on. So it's a lot of load here. Also, we have an RFC process in place. This is how you can get new features into Flux. In order to do that, you have to have. A, uh, a sponsor for your idea. You need to convince someone, which is a Flux maintainer, hey, how do you feel about my idea? That maintainer says, oh, it's great, I'm going to you know, uh, support you uh, in front of the community and the RFC process starts. And this RFC process is, can be quite long, it can go for two to three months. In, we had cases where it took like six months because it was like a huge thing, new in Flux, like uh, all the things that we've built with OCI. So it's a, it's a process where, you know, maintainers have to be involved and you have to show a sustained involvement also by improving the RFC, reaching out to the community, ask others for support, right? So this is how the community can drive Flux for through this RFC process and the core team is highly involved into that. Especially end users. If you're a big end user and you've always wanted a, a feature, this is the right way to talk about it. Um, yeah, and of course, community work. We, we figure out like the minimum we need at the, the, the amount of you know, questions, discussions, everything that's happened. We, we, we minimum need three people. We would love to have way more people involved in the community helping us uh, on this direction. Now, the problem is this is what we are today, right? Like we, we need three weeks. Uh, we need a couple of months to do an RFC, but the more things we add to Flux, the maintenance load only will go up. There is no way around it, right? You, if you add a new feature, that feature probably comes with some dependencies, right? Those dependencies evolved on their own. So Flux needs to evolve along with the dependency. It needs to keep up with the dependencies. There are all sorts of breaking changes in everything in, in CNCF ecosystem, right? You change a library there, it depends on Kubernetes, you can't upgrade Kubernetes unless you upgrade that library and so on. So, what we want to do going forward is, if we add the future to Flux, we need to analyze it. What's the impact of that future on the long term, right? And so we, we, 
We want to make people that are proposing features that are coming with us as more conscious about how much maintainers that thing drives inside the project. Can we sustain it? Um, other things like CVs, right? It's, it's raining with CVs everywhere. We, we've seen what's happening lately. So that's also something that adds to the maintainers because the more dependencies you add, the more risk you add to the project, the more the project can become vulnerable overnight because there is some major CV that impacts flux in that component. So that's another thing that adds up to, to the maintainers load. And there are many other things I just put here, some ideas, also the fact that we have APIs which are GA. We, we, we do the same thing as Kubernetes where not everything in Flux is GA, but each API, for example, how you define a Git repository, how you define a Helm release, how you define an OCI repo, all these things have their own versioning and some part of Flux, for example, Git repository and customized overlays are uh, GA. When you add something, you want to improve the Git repository, you want to add a new feature to it or something, right? It, it becomes a very hard thing to, to allow, right? If we change, if we add a new feature to a GA feature, how will that affect? Is it still GA? Should we say, no, this is beta, right? So we can't do that. We told people like, hey, Git repository is GA, we're not going to say, oh, we added this feature, so we're going back to beta. So it's a, it's a lot of effort when, when you add new features, when you improve something in the GA APIs, they need to be as stable, as mature as the API is today, right? So that's, that's another aspect of, that adds to the maintenance load. So the, the question is, if we keep adding new features to Flux from all, all directions, how we can protect Flux from, from future creep? So we, we thought about changing the RFC process and you know, add a cost. So the person that creates the RFC and says, hey, I want this new feature. What is the maintenance cost for that? And we have to figure it out. We need to you know, put a price on it. So then we can say, okay, if, if this new feature adds this cost, how we can balance it, how we can make it sustainable in the future. So, that can be by involving the persons, the organizations that want that new feature in the process and involve them in the long-term maintenance of that feature. Another thing that we could do to trim down the future creep in Flux is say, is that future really required in Flux core? Or we can build a controller or we can build a UI which doesn't have to be in the CNCF Flux, can be an extension of Flux in the ecosystem. If we can do that, and if it doesn't need to be in, in the core of Flux, we should strive to you know, enable that kind of contribution through the ecosystem. And you, we should enable our user base to build things around Flux and not put everything under CNCF. This is another general discussion for the, for the all CNCF projects which are graduated, is the idea and uh, because you know, as a platform uh, itself. Zoom? Okay. Yeah, so I, I was saying, we, we see this issue in all CNCF graduated projects. Once you have your project being graduated, you have, let's say, a GA release. You get to a certain stability and you have a promise to your users. Is it okay for you to, you know, create a sub-project which maybe it's alpha and put it there and make it graduate all of a sudden, I think it's not the right choice to do it. I think we should have some other process, maybe a graduation for these sub projects to make it into the CNCF project once they are mature. So that's, that's what we are trying to do by enabling our community to you know, add things to Flux as add-ons we have a dedicated GitHub organization called Flux City Community. It's not under CNCF. This is managed by the core maintainers of Flux. And we, the only, let's say, requirement for that is when you want to add an extension of Flux there, it has to match the license of Flux. And that's very important because if you 
put an add on there, the end goal is at some point it will become stable and maybe it will be part of the CNC block. So we, we really need the same license so we can streamline that process. And this is how we, we envision that we'll create uh, an extension to our governance to have this graduate process, how you get the thing, your add-on, from the community organization into upstream and you know, make it graduated. Okay, how can we sustain the maintenance effort? Uh, of course, we need to recruit more maintainers from, from the contributors pool. Every project has that main goal, right? It's the number one uh, thing that you as a maintainer have to think about. How can I you know, extend my group, make, make other people welcome here so you know it's a community effort and it's not only on five people, eight people, whatever. Um, what we observed with, with Flux is the fact that we, we have this maintainer label, right? You, if you contribute to Flux source controller of future, then, and we merge that at some point, a core maintainer or a current maintainer of the uh, uh, source controller will ask that person, hey, do you want to help us and became a, a maintainer yourself? And that person will ask what it entails, like everything, everything that in source controller, all the Git protocols, OCI operations, Helm operations, cosine verification, everything that's in there, right? And maybe that person will say, but I contributed this little thing. I can't just take over everything all of a sudden, right? And, and I understand it's a, it's a big responsibility to, you, you've added the future and then we ask you, hey, now you, you are responsible for everything that's there that was written from three years ago to today, right? It's a big responsibility. So we, we want to change this process and enable people to take ownership without putting the burden of a whole thing on their back. We, don't, we want to go into a process where if you add the future to a flux controller, to a flux component, whatever, we want you to be able to maintain just that at the beginning, right? And maybe later on, you'll get more comfortable with the code base, and you, at some point you'll say, hey, I really want to become a maintainer of the whole thing, right? So yeah. there's a really important consequence of this, which is that as we see Flux being used by more and more um, organizations, whether it's end users or vendors or others, inside their own solutions, whether it's consulting services or a product or a platform, then usually the piece that you're working on for that, let's like, take GitLab as an example. So GitLab have been using Flux and they've integrated into their GitLab platform. So they're doing continuous delivery with GitLab as a platform, it's great. So that means that they're touching certain pieces of Flux. What Stefan is describing is a way to make it easier for those pieces to be looked after by somebody like GitLab individually. So if you're listening and you're thinking, I'm working in an organization that's using Flux, this is how I'm gonna to touch it. This is a way forward for you. Yeah, with, with GitLab is, is, is quite a great example because we, we have the Flux bootstrap command, which allows you to, you know, set up Flux or with different Git providers and cloud providers. And we have for, for some Git providers like GitHub, GitLab, we have dedicated commands, right? So the scope, the logic of, 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 of that bootstrap is scoped to GitLab and it imports the GitLab SDK and does things for GitLab. The GitHub one does things with GitHub, right? So ideally, we would uh, want to invite GitLab and say, hey, can you take maintainership of your subcommand? Because you know best if you change something in your API how you can you know, uh, prevent Flux from uh, breaking when you change it. We also have another good example here is workload identity. We try to get Flux moving forward from you know, um, long-term keys, SSH keys that you need to rotate on your own. And we want Flux to be able to connect to all the external systems in a keyless manner. And how that works with OEDC, it's already in, in Kubernetes upstream, Qtlet knows how to work with workload identity, right? So ideally, we would like to invite Azure, for example, the Flux project and say, hey, Azure, can you take over the maintenance of Work, the workload identity component in Flux when in the YAML spec it's provider Azure, you know, and 
you ch you, if you change your workload identity implementation, you can also do it in Flux, and we can maintain it together. Of course, there is a lot of common code. It's the core of Flux, it's the GitOps toolkit, where if you change something there, you can break everything. So that's, we don't want to put that burden on top of everybody. That's where the core maintainers are there to figure out, hey, if I'm doing this change, I'm going to affect all providers. But there are so many examples in Flux where we can actually give those people full maintainership, full ownership of their future because that future is quite great, good defined into Flux and it's, it's uh, you know, encapsulated for them. Now, in order for someone to, some organization to say to an individual who contributed something to Flux, yes, we want this person to, to maintain Flux forward, I'm, I'm going back here where I started, that individual should be allowed to work on that future in the work hours, right? Because if you just add flux as an extra thing that your employee has to do, he'll probably not do it or he'll burn out and so on, right? So my message is if you, if you really want to help the project, this is the best way of how you can do it. Give, you know, your employees, the person that which are, you know, contributors to Flux, give them confidence to become maintainers, and how you can do that? You should allow them to work uh, in the work hours. And provide recognition so that if somebody's doing good work, then other colleagues in their organization know this is a good thing for the organization. It's not like a secret thing that we don't talk about. Yes, yes, of course. And we, every time we have a new uh, maintainer in the project, we, we try to say a nice thing. We, we add it to the, you know, every time we, we publish a blog post on, on, on our website. So we want to celebrate every individual that comes in our organization and helps Flux moving forward, but they should be also, you know, <laughs> encouraged from their own. Yeah, and I mean, when, uh, when we announced WeaveWorks is shutting down, I, I received, I don't know, over 100 emails and contacts from people saying, can we hire Flux maintainers. And indeed, fantastically, some of those Flux maintainers now have new jobs in new organizations, like Stefan is working at Control Plane, and others have gone to other places. But for me, I think that's the wrong question. The right question is, how do people become a maintainer, join the maintainer community? And this is, this is how, we, that's what we really hope this, these changes will support. And we'll have some more of that in a minute. Okay, so how we, the project, can incentivize organizations to invest in Flux, right? And that's why we are here. I don't have, I definitely don't have that answer. I only have one answer. And yeah, I'm going to put my <laughs> control plane hat. <laughs> right? So how we figured this out at, at control plane, we, we said, what, Control Plane is a security company, right? It's not a continuous delivery company. So how can Control Plane help sustain the project is by you know, using their knowledge, which is security, CV fixes, um, code audits, and so on, and how we can use what, what they are doing now, their main focus, and build something for Flux so they can invest in our core maintainers. So the solution for us is we've built this uh, Flux distribution, zero CVs, we can ship it very fast. It doesn't take three weeks to fix a CV. We, we've built, we have a team that analyzes all the CVs and we can streamline that. We also build a FIPS, FIPS compliant distribution and we also offer support. And this is something that Control Plane does for the core of Flux, for the, the Flux CNCF project. We can't do it for everything else. We don't want to be the next single vendor of Flux. This is not what we want to do. We want to, you know, enable some people and have a sustainable way for us to, you know, have those people on the team and offer something that enterprises may or may not want to do. This is one solution. I'm hoping we can find many other solutions in the ecosystem going forward. Okay. So one way you can help Flux is you can buy support from Control Plane. Or if you're another vendor, but you want to do something that isn't what Control Plane are doing, maybe you can use their 
products and services and then resell them or, or create larger solutions. Or maybe you've identified another piece of the puzzle. Stefan mentioned security a few times. There are other pieces. Po well, policy is an interesting area, for instance. Oh, yeah. Observability is an interesting area. Dashboards, management, fleet management. And there are lots of pieces of code that we're going to show you that you can work on in these areas. Please continue. OK, so Flux is, how can I put it, is, is invisible infrastructure in your clusters that enables you to build a platform to build continuous delivery, to build you know, internal platforms, platform engineering, all of that is not the platform. So Kubernetes, uh, Flux, like Kubernetes, is not made to be all things. It's a, it's a thing that it's like a, a layer, and on top of that layer, you can build your own uh, delivery infrastructure. Flux is very you know, unopinated. You can spin it up in many, many ways. You can, it's like Lego pieces, like 13 CRDs. You can mix them together and create your own platform. Right? So I think here is a, it's a lot of opportunity for the ecosystem to create something on top of Flux. Um, you know, and by creating that, giving back to the project uh, contributors and maintainers, and also have these organizations, this individual, being able to sustain their effort through, I don't know, commercial offering, um, SaaS versions, there are so many uh, solutions out there. But the idea is Flux is not an end product. <laughs> Okay, so if Flux is the foundation, we need a thriving ecosystem to sustain Flux from outside. And I'm going to leave Alexis now, and uh, he'll tell us about the ecosystem idea. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you, Stefan. So I just want to express my appreciation for Stefan's support in the last few months. It's been really amazing to see him continuing to display the focus and effort that he's famous for um, in, this, in this world. Um, it's really exciting. So I don't have to wear a hat anymore, which is quite nice. I can be hatless for a while. Okay. That lets me say things that I wouldn't say if I was wearing a hat. But one of them is that we had about 15 different vendors put up their hands and say, we want to provide some form of commercial services and support. We're not, sometimes we're not quite sure yet what that is. We recognize we'd like to become or hire maybe maintainers to get there, or it's going to be embedded in our platform, but we want to be visible about it. This is very important because visibility is the hardest thing in the ecosystem. That's why we have these conferences. So one of the things we are hoping from today is that people will discover each other. You will find out someone else wants to work on the same thing that you're excited about across the room. And it's up to you how that happens. It's not a directed process in that sense. We did a press release yesterday. It's on the CNCF site. And is it also on the Flux blog site? Yes. yes. Great. Lots of quotes from people. I met, it's a fun mention. Azure a few times. GitLab have provided very strong support and others as well, including Control Plane. And some big end users like Orange, the silver team I see is sitting over there. Thank you very much for your support. So we move from a single vendor world of Weaveworks to a community. All of the Weaveworks code is open source. So if anybody thought, oh, I want to do you know, GitOps sets, um, but it's closed source, that's completely open source now. There are people like, for example, I, think, I don't know if I can see David from SUSE, who used to work on that at Weave, but there are folks who want to continue that kind of code, and policy engines do. We'll give you some examples. This is what is the ecosystem. We also, this will be slightly more interactive because I have questions. How do you find other people who want to work with you? Where do you go? You can't come to a conference every day. Uh, it's really important to make yourself known and to say, hey, I'm excited about this. Don't be shy. This is why we have Slack channels and other places. Also, if you have shared ideas, they can turn into activity. And you know, I really want to see, and this is where the community team is so important, Kingdon and Tamo and, and, and the others, is this is to encourage interaction um, around this. And finally, 
The ecosystem also consists of work, as Stefan said. Make sure it's, the lights are on, not the pajamas. This is really important. Um, we talk a lot about burnout. Burnout starts with wearing pajamas while you code, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, and get involved, get the blessing and the recognition. So here's one example that's, that's gone through a transition like, that, to, to show you what's, what's going on. This was started by Chanwit, a wonderful person who was a colleague of ours at WeaveWorks. And Chanwit said, how do I get, do GitOps with Terraform? Well, is, is infrastructure as code the same as Flux? How does it work? And, and he wrote a Flux controller, I think is the right expression, yep. which allows you to coordinate the orchestration done by Terraform and the orchestration done by Kubernetes and Flux in a manner that can lead to consistent outcomes. At least, that's the promise. And it's fully integrated into Flux way of doing things. It issues events, you can alert, it uses source control, it's a pure extension of Flux. It's not something that runs you know, separately. So you can look at Terraform in the same way you can look at the core APIs of, of Flux. And that's, that's what we are trying to do with rebuilding Flux on the GitOps toolkit idea. You have a toolkit, you can build your own controller, and it behaves like Flux and then can, you know, take advantage of all the other features we have in the, in the Flux distribution. This is amazing, because it means you can now, effectively in a single transaction, it's not really a transaction, but in a single piece of work, you can ask for data services that live outside of Kubernetes to be deployed with apps that are being managed by Flux inside of Kubernetes. Other people wrote, uh, Michael wrote a Pulumi integration, I think. Yep. Um, AWS wrote the cloud formation. Cloud before. formation. Somebody did some cross-plane. Cross-plane's quite easy, so there isn't really a standalone project, but people have done cross-plane with Flux. And so putting all this together, this is now a community project. It's not, you'll see the WeaveWorks is mentioned in the URL, called Flux IAC, Flux Infrastructure as Code. And wearing no hats, I can say Tofu is also supported here. Yep. Um, this is a project that has already, you know, more than a thousand stars, which I'm told is a reasonable number of a starting out project. What's interesting, though, is when we released it from the WeaveWorks world into the wild again, about two weeks ago, we had a kickoff meeting. Um, there was one maintainer on the project at that moment. Now there are four. Okay. And the project was renamed to Tofu Controller. Yes. And, and this now is works with all the this Terraform good... variants. Good example of the community deciding what it wants to do for this particular element. And no one's going to get in your way here. Just do what you want. Do it together, though. And you'll notice at the bottom that in this particular project, it's on an Apache license, which means it lives in that world of things that could, if they wanted to, apply through the RFC process to be inside Flux. But maybe, not, maybe that's not the right thing for the project. It doesn't matter. But we do want it to be discoverable. So that means that, that we need help with things like making sure on the website you can find out about these things. They are listed there, but there's always work to do. So this is the structure of the ecosystem that we end up with. In the middle, the core, where it's inside the CNCF on an Apache license, and it's that deployment orchestration tool, very uh, carefully managed piece of software for the long term. Um, very high discipline around CVEs, et cetera. And then we have a middle group of projects that are, if you like, core ready, but not in core. They could be in the future if they wish to be. Um, they may not necessarily be ready. They may be considered not fully production ready in all use cases, but they're important. Um, and there are, people in the close flux community are very aware of these projects, maybe because of an RFC or something else. Um, and then there's the outer group. This is a really important group, because this is, if you're not a core maintainer, this might be where your idea starts. Um, a universe of community add-ons, experiments, playthings, things that you threw at the wall yesterday. It doesn't matter if they don't work yet. These are all, it's all legit out, out here in the universe. They could be a paid extra thing. It could be your support offering. It could be your platform that includes Flux. All of these things need to be advertised and known to everybody here, and that's something that we want to see happening. The Fluxverse, as I call it. Um, okay. 
goals of the ecosystem is all about growing the success of the project. And as Stefan said, that is not the same as creating new feature creep. It's about creating a broader community of users, products, platforms, tools, add-ons, extensions, and this, we will be working to make these more discoverable, and hopefully today you'll discover some other people who care about some, maybe these things on here. So you may not know there is a Flux Backstage plugin. Yep, if you like Backstage, a wonderful person at WeaveWorks called Kevin McDermott wrote a Flux Backstage plugin, um, which lets you from Backstage do Flux things. Um, this, is, this is in the community. We've GitOp Sets, which is a little bit like application sets in Argo, is completely open source. If someone wants to use that, it's there. And then GUI is a really interesting area because Gimlet have done Capacitor. There's a Weave GitOps GUI. There's also some other things that people have written. It'd be really interesting if there could be a community forming. I, I don't know where it would go. It might decide to do something else. <laughs> but a community could form around the GUI thing. And one of the things that I was hoping today would be that people who care about the GUI would find each other. And some principles, which I think are really important. Um, it has to feel like it's fair in lots of different ways. That means that some people will be vendors, some people will not be vendors. We just need to not lie about what we're doing. It's okay to sell things, because without having a business, we can't sustain the product and the project is really difficult. And that in turn means it has to have certain notions of equity and accessibility. So nobody should feel excluded and there should be easy ways in. I want to make sure today that I understand that everybody's confident about what those ways in look like. They're not, there's no mystery about when meetings are or if there is, um, or if there, are, if there are things that are not happening, like there should be a jobs board or there should be a place to ask these kinds of questions, we can fill in those gaps. And that, we hope, will add up to positive change and ultimately sustainability, which is a big topic for open source in general and for all foundation projects. So here are some of the things that I would really want to make sure that everybody is confident about. Does everybody know when the, develop, when the, when the dev calls are? Does anybody feel they would like to be on any of these calls and is not, are not aware of it? Uh, that, you know, it's because it's the information is hidden away. Somebody over there, good. Yeah, we want to make, make sure that everybody knows. We also, um, Tamo has recommended we start an ecosystem call as well, because we don't want the dev call to be sort of cluttering up too much. Um, I'm happy to be the initial chair of that call, but if someone else wants to help me, I'd be really, really grateful. Um, and that's where people can talk about their project idea, find each other. And then there are the Slack channels. Please make sure that you're in those. Um, that's where if you want to pick up a piece of the extensions or work on a GUI or, or have questions about how does this work, or if you're a vendor and you've put up your hand and say, I want to be in the support ecosystem, please come into the Slack channel and be a person who gets known as somebody is a good person to answer questions. That's really, really important. And then, of course, the projects and last but not least, documentation and the website. Please remember, if you're thinking about becoming a contributor, this is a great place to start. I tried to go to the website and I couldn't find X, but here's how to fix it. I proposed this change. Or I read this doc and it feels a little out of date to me. Could this be a better way of introducing this? You would not believe how popular this shit is with the maintainers because they would have to do it themselves otherwise. Is, yeah. And there's nothing worse than working away and you know at the back of your mind that what you're working on is getting further and further and further and further away from the docs or website which need to be updated. So all of these things, if you are, and if you don't know what to do, please just contact directly and ask questions on Slack. This is so important, don't be shy. I mentioned this a couple of times because it's very close to my heart. Fairness for vendors. And we want vendors to do things that help users and help the community very, very much. We don't want all those things to be the same things. Sometimes they will be the same things. That's also OK. But we really want them to be clear about what they're doing. And in return, we also want them to be um, have the right to advertise what they're doing. Otherwise, it, what's the point, quite frankly? And then they want them to have the opportunity to meet other people interested in what they're doing, because they might have jobs for them, or they might have other opportunities. So this is an area where I think there'll be an active focus for the next 
few months, is how to improve that, because otherwise it becomes very difficult to put in the effort over the term. And so, I think this is my last slide. Yeah, there's a couple, a couple more. What do people actually want to work on? That's something that is in, really in the form of a question. And today, Stefan was kind enough to refer to the word plan in, in relation to this. I don't think it's fair to call this a plan. It's a proposal for how um, people could go forward if they want to work on things. So I would ask first, for example, are people interested in the infrastructure as code areas? Is this something you think is useful for GitOps? Do, do, people, do people have end users or customers who like to do things with Tofu or Terraform or Pulumi or Crossplane with Flux? Is this a useful thing? Hands are going up. Does anyone want to say anything about it? Or is anyone interested in becoming a more involved as well. I believe some of the IAC folks may have dialed in. They couldn't come to the conference because it's they're all around the world. Okay. So using but not necessarily contributing is the, is the is the frame for the moment. This is this is the challenge. So we want to have a focus on what the success is around IAC so that you can see it, and we'll have probably try and encourage the CNCF to promote more examples, because once you see the results, then you can have recognition, and recognition creates motivation, and things like that. What about the Flux GUI? Does anybody not want there to be a Flux GUI? Only CLI. So there's a lot of ideas about a Flux GUI. Stefan and I have been talking about a cool project called Headlamp, which is an interesting project in the CNCF. It's a general purpose Kubernetes dashboard that could be adapted. But Headlamp has an opinion that's a little bit Kubernetes centric. So maybe there are other things you could do that are just more styling from the point of view of the Flux user. Um, there's also some pieces of we've GitOps that you could repurpose. It's all Apache licensed. You can do what you like with it. So if you're thinking now's my chance, to, I know that some of the supporting firms have, have said to me, on private emails, we want to, we think GUI is a great opportunity to help. But it is, it's an opportunity to do things. And then there's GitOps sets, and there's also Weave Policy Engine, um, there are various integrations with Kubernetes CAPI. Um, anything else that you think is, is relevant could be there. And if you have any doubts, contact me. Also, I see Kingdon is here. Um, Kingdon is insanely cool and has volunteered to help to uh, put some of the, what we used to be the WeaveWorks documents in a on, safe online place on GitHub, which means that people can go and find out what some of this effing code actually does and what it's for. Um, so thank you so much, King. This is just a great example of how information, documentation, comes before contribution. So thank you, Kingdon. So if you want to help with that, that would be amazing as well. Yes. He's also fun at parties. And so here are some other things that Tamo suggested that, that we do, which we're still sort of working through, like maybe a dedicated Slack channel, um, having a sort of kickoff call. I'm still trying to figure out what the right things are. But if you have any opinions on this or requests, shout now or, or contact us later, whatever you like, either of us or, or Kingdon or Tamo or the other folks, it doesn't matter. We will all work together to identify the right things to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I don't know, we, allocate, we got a generous allocation of an hour and a half for this slot, but we've now used about 45 minutes, which is, I think for most humans is plenty of time. So if you would like to stick around and talk and chat and meet each other or ask questions, please do. But I would also say that if you're thinking about lunch or the next talk and you feel the urge to disappear, that's also okay. You won't be considered to be missing anything particular. So. Um, what would anyone like to talk about in the remain if you want to stick around in the remaining time? Anyone? Does anyone have also things that you're frightened of, desires, elephants in the room? Puya. Yes, that is something that I think could work. Would that be good? Is that a good use of time? I would be totally cool with that because I can be yeah. hatless and sit up here. It's quite hot up here, by the way. Yeah. 
Um, anyone else got another suggestion? Does anyone else want to raise any elephant in the room type points before we do what Priya suggested? Yeah. So the customized controller is powered by a library, which is called Flux Server Side Apply. We, we've built that some time ago. It's an um, abstraction on top of how you reconcile any kind of Kubernetes objects, and they need to be Kubernetes objects in, in, uh, as a ghost track. So it doesn't really matter how you get to those final objects. Customized controller is one form that uses this supplier, this custom applier, which is a shared library. And you can build your own controllers that has garbage collection, does all the things that customized controller does, but in a different way. For example, I'm, I'm working in my, in my spare time at a thing called Timony, which is like Helm, but based on Q. And I plan to you know, create a controller in the future that uses the same library as customized controller without forcing people into using customize if they don't want to. It's, uh, it needs some community effort. Uh, building a controller from scratch is not that easy, even if we have improved the whole process. We, we have a runtime abstraction uh, uh, on top of controller runtime. We have these libraries for authentication, server-side apply, uh, workload identity, but yeah, it's, uh, it's not something you can do in a weekend. Uh, and we can work together as a group on how we can you know, uh, formalize more, maybe have some QBuilder extensions, stuff like that, so people can get started faster building their own custom controllers that work with all the, the Flux other things uh, and make it part of the ecosystem easier. Tofu controller is a great example around other things than applying state to the cluster because apply state outside the cluster and it uses all the other packages and share components in the GitOps toolkit. Okay, right, so let's do that organizing thing. Uh, I think we have a natural GUI corner here. So GUI corner. Some people put up their hand about IAC. I think this gentleman was one of them. So maybe you can be the beginning of IAC table. Okay, tentative. It's still the tentative IAC table. Um, would anyone else like to have a little huddle or a group around a separate doc? Can we put anyone on website docs near Kingdon? Kingdon, can you make yourself visible? So we've got Puya, GUI, IAC in the, on the right, docs and website with Kingdon, who's got a ponytail and is wearing a little Shoulder bag. Uh, 